There is little question to the fact that besides the ever-changing political landscape, that the physical landscape of Ripon, Wisconsin has changed over the years as well. The geographical location of this area has almost always been described as majestic and spoken very highly of by all who ever set foot here, even being referred to as a Garden of Eden. Field notes from John Mullet, who recorded and surveyed the land in August of 1834, notes, Prairie land rolling at first rate. The Wisconsin phalanx were the ones to settle and bear the fruits of harvest of that first-rate land in, in promoting Ceresco in an article from the Wisconsin Argus in April of 1845. Member Luther Parsons describes, Our location is midway between green and fresh lakes in a beautiful valley, to the sides of which glides a crystal stream of sufficient volume and fall to serve all the hydro power which may be needed. The writer then goes on to say, Our place of shipment will be on the Fox River, six miles north. This river communicates with Lake Michigan. There's a steamboat on Lake Winnebago, which runs up the Fox and Wolf River. It is of great service to the country. Goods are proposed to be brought here from Green Bay to a place on our navigable waters. Today, just about six miles north of Ripon and between Berlin is a marshland known as Rush Lake. The only stream, Wacaw River, the outlet of Rush Lake, which runs south to north through Wacaw, where it develops a water power and empties into the Fox River. Years ago when settlers arrived, there were several creeks and river tributaries that connected to the Fox. Over the many years and clearing of the lands, nearly all of them are dry. However, the Honorable James G. Pickett in 1903 wrote, Rush Lake had its outlet at the southern extremity, connecting with Green Lake and the Fox River instead of its northeastern side as now. The waters of the lake were from four to six feet higher than at present, thus covering the great marshes and making it fully three times its present size. We don't have to imagine what that must have looked like. Another danger is posed by the swollen Fox River. Officials expect the uh, river to crest at 17 feet on Saturday. That's three feet above flood stage, and people are being warned to move to higher ground. Jerry Burke reports. Old-timers in Berlin are searching their memories for the last time the Fox River rose to 17 feet. The National Weather Service says that's what the latest rains will raise the Fox to this Saturday. There are a lot of marshes around Berlin like this one that normally can handle the overflow of the Fox and at least hold down the flooding. Now this morning we're told the river is still rising. Portions of county highways S and Q in Green Lake County also are closed because of flooding. Running right through Ceresco is Silver Creek and also referred to as Green Lake Inlet. It empties into Green Lake and it has its rise some three or four miles from Ripon in the town of Matoman. Numerous large springs whose united streams once flowed into the town had furnished abundant water power of superior excellence at Ripon and Ceresco. According to the Wisconsin Historical Society, the subject of improving these waterways began as early as 1829. In 1839, Congress made a survey, and in 1846, it made a grant of land. When the state was admitted in 1848, the grant was accepted and a board of public works was appointed. Who was on this board? Why is it relevant? Work had begun and contracts being let out for different sections of the Fox, but then the work languished as the sale of the lands granted fell off. In 1851, Morgan L. Martin of Green Bay made a proposition to continue the work. Why did he make this proposition? Who was he involved with? Why is this relevant? Martin had accepted receipts for the sales of land as made and took certificates of debt for the balance due with interest at 12%. But when L.J. Farewell became governor, he refused to issue certificates for the work. In 1853, Governor Farewell advised that as that enterprise was in hopeless state financially, it be incorporated as the Fox and Wisconsin River Improvement Company. 
In 1856, the company had to reconstruct a portion of the work already done, but capital was scarce. And a little later, Eastern capitalists bought the enterprise and reorganized it as the Green Bay and Mississippi River Canal Company. The next move was to sell out the entire enterprise, which had begun as a state venture, to the federal government. In all, 680,000 acres of land and $2 million in money had been put into this enterprise, with little to show for it except some minor improvements along the Lower Fox. These improvements did absolutely nothing to benefit or help the growth of Ripon, Wisconsin. The federal government had mostly confined all its work to the Lower Fox River, and the trans-state waterway scheme was suddenly abandoned. We have reason to believe that the loss of Ripon's great water power was done intentionally. This case remains open as our investigation continues. If you have any information to share, please contact us directly by sending an email to info at ripponrabbithole.com. We will update this record as new information becomes available, so be sure to sign up and subscribe at ripandrabbithole.com for case notes, external source links, news and updates regarding this or any of our other mysterious case files.